one has a bright light inside of them that deserves to be seen by the world. That's why it's time to shine the light on the extraordinary who are accomplishing phenomenal things. This is the Shine Out Loud show with Lillian Ogbogo. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever in the world you are, and welcome to another episode of the Shine Out Loud Show with me, Lillian Abogo. This evening, I have a woman who uses her voice to transform, as she puts it, deadbeat scripts, boring ass webinars, and brings it to life. She uses her voice to weave magic and share stories for her clients. When she is not doing this, She is a voiceover coach, a teacher, a mentor, and she helps people use your voice to create impact and speak with presence and power so they can have the impact in the world um, in the world that they live in. I am talking about none other than Leanne Turner. So join me and welcome her to the show. Hey, Leanne. Hi, nice. When I listen to the intro, I'm like, woo, who's that? (laughs) You, you, it's you, just in case you weren't sure. (laughs) That is so nice. Thank you so much. Wow. (laughs) Definitely feel welcomed. Oh, good, good, good. Because that's what we want. We want you to be welcomed and sit down and tell us your story. So before we jump into the fanciful world of voiceovers, um, yeah. I discovered something about you today. Mm-hmm. You are a degreed master detective. Well, yeah, your yeah. original area of study was criminology. So how did you yep. go from criminology in forensics? In fact, let's start there. How did you start in forensics? Um, I remember like going way back. Like, I remember like when I was about... Mm, nine I was like oh when I'm older I want to be a judge I want to put bad people away and stuff like that and then um um you know you just kind of get advice how do you get into law how do you get into mm-hmm. forensics and stuff like that so followed the normal route um did a degree law and psychology did a master's criminology and forensic psychology and then just kind of got into a job only by God's grace, definitely, because it ain't by me. Um, <laughs> and um, and just I was able to start off like in just smaller kind of investigating like insurance kind of case fraud and then progressing into investigating corruption and corporate fraud. And I think like if you have like a determination and you've got a push on it yourself and God said like this is where you're going to go, you can get there. So that's where I started off like my career, my big dreams of the world, what I'm going to do. And Mm -hmm. I did that for 10 years. And then I had always had like this hustle mindset though, because like my family and that I've always had like, okay, you may have a main job, but you've got to be hustling on the side. So I'd always, I'd always love like in my brain, you know, like the brain's divided into like, you've got a logistics side and then you've got like a creative side. So I'd always had this creative side in me, but always trying different things to kind of express it in things but I love doing logistics project managing and finding out things and that's why I always say to my sister I like please don't plan me any surprise parties any surprise dinners because they don't work for me because I always work it out and it's not it's not a surprise for me so things like that I can, yeah that's I'm, I'm not the best person to surprise honestly really it's just like you know she was trying to put a book together for my birthday and she couldn't work out how to get the pictures off of this drive and I was like uh, I think she's making me a birthday book and she was I just worked it all out so uh, uh, yeah I just think that like, your poor sister working yeah. so hard to surprise her and there you are being yeah. Sherlock Homina exactly exactly <laughs> exactly like yeah it was yeah 10 years of wow you know seeing like um hmm the harder side of life for some people when you have a lot of money and then there's a breach of trust. That's when you get like fraud and corruption. It's just very sad to see what people do for, for money, for the P. Yes. It's like, wow, okay, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that, I, I can imagine we can probably sit and talk about that alone as an entire show. But we won't because I want to find out what led you ultimately to transition to becoming a full-time vocal artist <laughs> 
and a vocal professional? Yeah, um, I would say I had always like prayed and asked God, I want to do something creative. If I want to work for myself, I don't want to, um, I want to use my mindset, my logistics side, but I want to bring in a bit more of the creativity side because, you know, like, some people have two, five or ten different talents or gifts in their life. In their life. So um, I kind of thought, like, I want to do some of the creative side. I want to embrace that side, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, like, if I look back, I had always had, not that I could have understood it or accepted it myself, I'd always had people telling me, Leanne, you've got a nice voice, you should do something with it. Try and do something with your voice. And like, I just couldn't hear what people are saying. And I was just like, nah, sorry, I'm very in tuned into my law, criminology, finding, investigating people. I was so in tuned and so invested time, money, energy, etc. cetera, right. into that career. I just couldn't hear when people were saying, you should try and get into voiceover, try and do this. And I was like, nah, 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 you can't get money from voiceover. Nah, that's for people who've gone to dance, singing and drama school, you know, that type of thing. And I was like... <laughs> I'm just not an atypical person to get into that industry. I don't know anyone and stuff like that. So if I look back, I'd always tried different creative businesses, maybe making handbags from magazines and photographs and making jewellery. I'd always try to do a creative type of side hustle. But the one I had kind of done a couple of stuff, reading poems or doing a bit of presenting here and there was voiceover, but I'd never really embraced it because I was never really, I don't know, 100% confident of how my voice sounds because um I know that when I was always talk about this when I um talk I may not look how I sound if that makes sense Mm -hmm. people start to create their own images of like this voice suits this type of person then I show up you know what I mean I've had incidents like at my job because a lot of the time at my old job when I was investigated I'd often work undercover so no one would see what I look like they may get an email from me or just hear me and then when I show up in court and stuff they're like oh where's the girl like where's the person and I'm like it's me you know like it's just crazy um <laughs> so stuff like that would happen um so then I um then what happened three years ago now there was an opportunity uh to end that contract get a payout and I thought this is my opportunity to go you know you only get one life I don't want to go to heaven and then God says to me, what about all of those 10 talents I gave you to go and do all these great things? I don't want to have that conversation with God saying like, I gave you all these great talents, Lynn, you you only use one. I'm I'm very just, I don't want to have that. I want to say like, God, you gave me two, three, four, five, 10 talents and I use them all to the best of my abilities, you know? Right. As one of my friends says, I tithed my talent. Do you know what I'm saying? I can't be skilled in more than one area and only be comfortable or fearful enough to use one nah that's not me so um I took the payout run of the money set up my own business everything up from scratch the email the studio uh, the website it's, it's a constant learning curve for me mm-hmm. um because it's a total different industry from what I trained in and worked in but still in the same or the sad way there are still hints of what I have done for 10 years even in this industry, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does, because there will be skills that you'd have learnt from from your former career that definitely sure. the discipline, being able to you know, follow through, carry out um, a project from start to finish, even the mere fact that you've planned and created your own studio in your home, that re- requires a project yeah. management mindset attached to it. So definitely I can see where your old career would have lent itself to what you're doing now. Definitely, definitely for sure. All of those things and more. It's, it's, and, and people might say like, oh, you should go back to it. I'm like, nah, uh, there's, you know, you don't know how long you're going to be here in life. You want to try and do everything, you know. Um, for, yeah, because for me, gone are the days when you stay in a career for 25, 35, 45 years and you leave with a little golden bell and a watch. That's not really my dream goal Mm -hmm. anymore you know just life the internet world things have changed so much and you just gotta move with it in a way you know I definitely agree so let's you know listen I've listened to a couple of your sample commercial reads is Mm -hmm. there like a metronome or a specific beat to keep in time when you're doing a reading um 
I would say it's, it's client dependent. So say, for example, if you're doing a read for Dove, the skincare range, depending on what the products come like, that's usually kind of like a vibrant, uh, kind of fast paced this kind of mode. But the client will direct you exactly how they want it. Even when you put a full stop or a pause in between a sentence, if you're having a client led read, they will be in your ear on Skype or Zoom or whatever. And they'll tell you, okay, want a little push here, etc. Right. When I do, yeah, when I do reads for like the sports people, like Adidas and stuff, that's more like upbeat, like you know, like kind of sound like, yeah, the new trainers out here, get yourself some September two thousand and nine, you know, something like that. It's all kind of, it's it's a bit more uh, upbeat, fun and stuff. But yeah, every different project is different. Even from when, when Adidas to Nike, they want different stuff. Yeah. Okay. All right. So everything is client driven. And, you know, so I mentioned that you're also a, you know, you're a coach and teacher and you have your online course courses on yeah. Udemy. And yeah. one of them is accent softening. How does mm -hmm. one begin to soften their accent and why would it be necessary? Yeah. I mean, in, um, in London, sadly, unfortunately, if just the way state of play is, there are still some industries where you need to uh, be speaking in a certain way. Like, say, for example, in the profession that I often mixed in was the legal profession. You, you can't really go in there and progress, I felt, if you didn't speak with a certain clear articulation. Obviously, things are changing now. Um, if you wanted to present stuff at court, you can't just go in there babbling away. You might be the most qualified lawyer in your country, but if you cannot articulate correctly and sound persuasive, because what happens with the brain is if it listens to a voice that it doesn't understand clearly what it's saying, it brings in this uh, feeling of distrust. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And then anything that you say, and you could be talking the truth. It has this element of distrust because the brain cannot process that accent, that speed, that rhythm. Does that make sense? So I, I Definitely. never, um, yeah. So I never say get rid of your accent because your accent is you. It's like where you're from, your upbringing, your education, how you're feeling, and stuff like that. But um, I always say like be aware. Different industries, different situations, whether you're at work, home, or play, you need to adjust your accent. And in particular, the speed that you talk at, because your listeners may not be used to hearing, I don't know, a Spanish accent speaking English at that speed, you know. So sometimes you've got to slow it down mm -hmm. or change the rhythm so that you can be clearly understood by your audience. Okay. And, you know, it's not even just the distrust or creating mm -hmm. a, a, a congruency issues when people speak, mm -hmm. but... Look at what happened, I think, uh, with The Apprentice recently, where you had mm. this young lady who project managed, she had great skills, but had yeah. this really terrible squeaky voice that mm -hmm. people dismissed whenever she opened her mouth. So she yeah. wasn't listened to because of the quality of her voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And it's it's quite disappointing that, you know, and you'd think like things like um, being like prejudiced against like height, size, skin color doesn't exist. But it still does. You have voice prejudices. So like that lady on Apprentice, her voice and um, the girl of the Bob, isn't it? That kind of that girl, I think, yeah. even with her voice. And um, when I first watched that show, I thought, I don't know how long this girl's going to last. <laughs> um, um, with that type of voice, certain sounds linked to certain kind of levels of uh, responsibility. So right. you hear like women with like high or soft floaty voices like Joanna Lumley. Those voices are engaging and trustworthy. If you hear a squeaky voice like that person, if they're trying to sell you a contract, would you really trust them? So like, yeah, I'll give you, I'll let you go and put through that mortgage for me. It's different things that come with different sounding voices. And that's why I really do um, strongly advise people who have to talk for work. Some jobs you don't have to talk that much, you know, to the... Um, client but if you have to talk and it has an effect on whether you're closing that deal or you're making that money for that month you really have to learn how to articulate correctly for your listener that's mm -hmm. who you're trying to sell your voice to mm -hmm. okay so we know that there are different dialects especially in the uk when people mm -hmm. are talking about voices on tv there's a lot of northern voices then there's something known as the rp 
and mm-hmm. which is our uh, received pronunciation. Yeah. Yeah, Can definitely. Learn it, and is it or is it just really the bastion of, as they say, the BBC? Um, speakers or is it something Mm -hmm. anyone can actually learn and utilize yeah I think anything is possible you can for sure definitely use learn receive pronunciation so it's like what you see on the BBC and heightened receive pronunciation is what you'd see on Downton Abbey etc I think it's great if you can adjust your mouth your breathing and your tongue to speak in that way But I would personally only train someone to speak in that way if they're going to do an acting job that requires them to do that. Or if they're going into an industry, they're going to go and work for Buckingham Palace, etc. Because that type of English speaking voice is slowly but surely dying out because London, Britain as, as a whole, is having a lot of kind of mixed accents coming in. So the traditional one, the received pronunciation RP, that's slowly but surely dying out. Because you'll hear even on BBC, there's a couple of different accents being thrown around and stuff. Right. Um, and also, I guess it's it still exists, but in mm-hmm. made in Chelsea land people. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. <laughs> Definitely, it is. Yeah, it made in Chelsland, and even their accent, it is received pronunciation. But some of them, they've got a bit of a floaty, like a lilt on it, where it floats in and out. So okay. sometimes they may um, have a background where they've grown up, or they do six months in another country. So they'll come back with a little bit of a, a twang from somewhere. Could be Sardinia, America, depend on their lifestyle. Because I've seen and heard people who are based in Chelsea, etc., born and bred, but their accent has a little fro on it. Yeah, right. Okay. So we're talking about becoming a voice um, over act, um, artist, actor. Mm-hmm. How does one start in the industry? Someone is like, you know what? I think my voice sounds great. What's the first thing you would tell them to do? Um. Wow. I would say um, the first thing to do is read, just read a script or a blog or something out loud and record onto your phone on a WhatsApp. And then I would say send it like to someone on LinkedIn, on uh, Instagram, someone who's actually a, a practicing voiceover artist. A lot of people write that on their um on the gram or on their LinkedIn page, you check their stuff. They're not actually doing much, you know, right. um, and ask for an honest opinion because your friends and family will tell you something to not hurt your feelings. But someone who's in the industry, who's not emotionally connected to your big dream and um, will tell you, you know what, I think you've got something, you know? So I think definitely get advice. Like if you've got a sore on your foot, you go to the doctors, don't you? You don't go to the post office and show them your bad toe. You go to the doctors and say, listen, I've got this. What do you think I should do? So get advice, get it quickly, um, but practice every single day. And talking generally, like at work, on the train, that's different from talking uh, for voiceover stuff. It's, it's a slightly different. Same tool, but using it in a different way, you know? Mm-hmm. Okay. So get practice, get practicing, mm. send out your voice and actually... You know, are they voiceover um, workshops, labs, or things that you will recommend that people can actually do? Yeah, for sure. I think uh, get advice, send out your sound uh, to people in the know. Uh, you can join. I'd get the free version of these kind of online websites like Voices123, Voices.com. A lot of these are American-based ones. There's a UK one called Mandy.com dot co dot uk i think or mandy.org you can get yourself on this you can see what's currently booking and if you sound like what these um the the clients are looking for and i think learn a lot go on youtube go to a workshop there's workshops in so many of these studios there's one that i went to first of all i think they're called showreel recordings on mm-hmm. good street um okay. fantastic company they do production engineering and voiceover so they do everything all in one um and i think definitely read a lot read as much as you can um on kindle go on youtube there's so many different long serving voiceover artists and they've got channels up so much information learn learn and learn and practice 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 every single day read something read anything read the blog read a book 
read the Bible because the Bible is the only book that has so many different types of scripts in it. It's got a song, it's got a dance, it's got drama, it's got anger, it's got um, emotions. That's the one thing that you can read every single day and practice, just reading that out loud. And I just say, keep practicing, um, get advice. Do not, if I tell anyone this, do not cut your demo until the time is right. And you'll know the time is right once you've got advice uh, and getting a coach or a trainer who can actually sit in and listen to you. Mm -hmm. Um, Like for me, like I'd always been told I've got a great voice, even though I ignored it for many years. And when I said, yeah, I'm going to do this like as a pro, I got coaching, lots of training, went to workshop, was on YouTube, reading up, practicing every single day. When I say practice every single day, it doesn't have to be long. It could be a three to 15 minute reading out loud and stuff. But you're trying to uh, practice because talking is not really just talking. It's this whole body thing. It's like, what's your body language saying? What's your facial expression saying? Can you even breathe right to support your voice to speak for even three minutes straight? It's a whole different thing. And um, I would even say it's totally unconnected. But I'd even tell people, start going swimming and learn how to breathe properly. Because if you can't even breathe properly swimming, there's no way you can have the endurance to read for an audio book for two, three hours, if you kind of control your breathing, swimming, that really helps. Okay. Um, that's my um, kind of experience. I don't think anyone else is out there saying that, but I'm like, do it. It helps you breathe, which helps you to speak more effectively. But there's so many avenues into this industry. There's no like, okay, you do this, tick, you do this, tick, and then you get big jobs. So many different ways. Like some people, I know at my old job, were doing the voiceover for the audio recordings for the company. Others do it for a charity angle, do charity presentations and read poems online. But I think get yourself out there, get yourself a SoundCloud page or a podcast page and just get your voice out there and get a website. It doesn't have to be paid. You can just get some on WordPress and put a couple of samples of how you sound and don't kind of wait for this perfect sound. You've got to progress through the sound that you are, you know, and so put up a couple of samples of you reading a coca-cola or an audiobook and why I say get professional advice and coaching is because you need to know what does your voice actually suit because not all voices can do gaming and animation and characters like me right. yeah I've been chosen to do a couple of animation but I don't have like nine different characters that I can pull out of the bag so if you've got an animation style voice you've got to be able to say like maximum recording time is it you know you've got to be able to pull it out of the bag and sound genuine um so you've got to know whether you've got a commercial voice are you an advert you're an audio book are you've got that big bass cinema boom voice you've got to know which niche is yours because you can't come and do everything you've got to come and niche it out so that's as well what I say you get a lot of advice and there's a lot of help out there you just got arcs and um hustle like you you have lost your mind as well that's the big part <laughs> yeah like you've lost your mind Okay, yeah, that that's the important takeaway. Just yeah. keep at it and hustle like you've lost your mind. But yeah. we're talking, you know, talking about the accents and talking about dialects and mm-hmm. creating different characters. What mm-hmm. is which is the most fun for you to do? Um, oh, do you know, I like obviously talking in my obviously my own one because that's easy. Um, I'll often do. Um. Ah, oh, so like sometimes I'll do like different accents. Like I might do like um, I think this one's I, I me. I'm always someone that sits and watches and listens to people because of my old job. Yes, I used to do it a lot, but now I do it just to gain voices and accents. So there was this company I used to work with, and she used to say, "Hey, Eliana, Maria Tiz." So she was from Wales, and every time she's talk, I was like, "This lady sounds like she's singing or something." So there's that one. There was one from, I think he was from Exeter. I used to always imitate this guy. He used to say, like, where's your mom and that? Where's your mom? Where's your mom and that? You know? Like, so you you got to, like, be a good people watcher, I always find. I don't really do that many different accents. Um, I love doing that one. What else is there? I do, yeah. I'll just imitate loads of different ones. Obviously, a Jamaican one's very easy for talk, you know, because people in the north say, I mean, when me, I talk. <laughs> but it's it's like different, you know. So it's right. just like you become an actor for like three minutes or something like that. You know, you can just 
really imitate. If you love it and you enjoy listening to people, you can easily just have an ear to listen and then imitate it straight away. Okay. And since we're, we're sticking to adverts and, um, mm-hmm. a, and accents, you switch on the TV and you're watching shows. They have an actor voicing a character that is meant to have a distinctive African accent. I'm not going to mm. call anyone <clears throat> Black Panther. <laughs> yeah. Which is so far from, you know, you're like, okay, this accent you're doing, did it come via Ghana, via yeah. Asia? Where is this accent coming from? But yeah. do you find yourself as a voice coach screaming at the TV going, why? Why are you sounding like this? How yeah. you, why is it that we still have that? Yeah, it's, you know what, I think sometimes, you know, when you're trying to do, because Black Panther was epic, salute them, it was oh, an I, amazing I film. Black Panther, yeah, the accent was hanky. The accent hell. was, um, yeah, I think like, <laughs> you know, sometimes when you can tell the focus might have been on other stuff, just get this out, do it for the culture, make the outfit, get the romance, you know, all the different other stuff are covered, <laughs> then that accent probably came as an afterthought, you know what I mean? And um, that's how you'll get those things. Or maybe the person who selected it didn't think it was a concern because they thought everything else would be so great. No one would be concerned. You couldn't quite place which part of Africa or was it even Africa (laughs) this accent came from and stuff. And I I mean, I, you know who I really love and I rate man, this guy, because when you do an accent, you have to sound genuine. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of people who can do it. And I remember the first one I thought, wow, this guy's incredible. Um, when Idris Elba left town and went to the States to go and do The Wire and any other thing where he's got doing an American accent, he actually sounds American. He really, really does. And I'm like, he's really genuine. And I think, like, when um, uh, you see, like, videos, and it all comes down to, like, is it seen as an important part of ha- of this person's, of this, um, you know, this character on the film or the TV show? Mm-hmm. Because your voice is everything. Even if you're acting up in a part like Black Panther, I'd expect you to have some big, deep bass voice like Barry White with an, like a, I don't know, like a, I don't know, like like a Ghana or Nigeria twang with a bit of Senegal in there. Do you know what I mean? Like something, wow, really deep and bassy. I don't know. But yeah, that does make me think sometimes like "Mm, the accent, oh, is, yeah. Is, yeah. Sometimes you're like, okay, you're watching stuff. I I think I remember I was watching, I believe it was Law and Order, and they supposedly had this woman who was a a lawyer or something, and she's supposed to be Nigerian, and oh, she came gosh. in and she was speaking, and I'm looking at the TV going, okay, uh, I need you all to identify what part of Nigeria this woman is from because <laughs> somebody screwed up on this one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like particularly, like I, I watch Law and Order. It's one of my favourite shows, and like I've seen some of them, and they're like, "Where, where's this accent? Because this is not Haitian accent either." What they're trying to say, yes, yeah, Haitian, and I'm like, it's not. Um, yeah, you can just tell that for some kind of creatives, the voice is like a is 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 an add-on if there's time, if there's budget, we'll get a voiceover coach, we'll get a speaking coach in there. Right. But it is, for me, it's essential because that's what is a convincer for me. Exactly. It makes it more congruent. And you're like, you can watch mm-hmm. it without your brain going, wait, there's something wrong here. There's something wrong here. Yeah. So you're watching and it's believable. Like you mentioned about Idris Alba, you mm-hmm. then focus on the story itself. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because a voice can just throw you off and you're like, nah, sorry. Bye. <laughs> And it's true. It can so do that. And so, yeah, definitely having the right accent and the right voice. And since we're speaking of that, with the uproar that followed with The Simpsons and a few other animated shows Mm -hmm. with the discussion of representation, do you Mm. think that there's enough being done to have diversity in the voiceover industry? Yeah, yes and no, because like the voiceover industry now it's becoming a lot more artist led, if that makes sense. Whereas before it was like the traditional route was, you know, you'd be in a certain union and then you've got with a particular agent who's getting you all the bookings and stuff. But because of the glorious Internet and the world becoming on your doorstep and if you have a hashtag hustle mindset, you right. can change the whole way the game looks. So 
You can be like me, a chick in East London who gets booked by Adidas, booked by Google, never seen these people before, never going to their headquarters. Just see me on Instagram, give me an email. I've done the read, I've got picked. That's how it happens. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, there is always going to be that old school mentality and stuff. But because of the Internet and the way life is changing and it's been more artist led, I feel like myself coming in there three years, full time, done it, dabbled a bit before. But the way technology and hustle and you you can do it. If you listen to people like this, is the guy, Gary Vaynerchuk, how he says how you can market yourself. Mm-hmm. You can go in and crunch and step into any industry if you get your marketing right. No, this is absolutely true. And do you think there's still that expectation for black people to be cast as the urban character in commercials? Yeah, it's yeah. I was, I was talking to someone about that. It's, it was like the urban character or... In the advert, it's one, it's a black lady and two small kids, no husband around. Mm. Um, Always that type of, that's like a hard uh, prejudice to really break down, particularly in England. Because when you watch adverts here in England, you go to other countries, like you go to Africa, you go to the Caribbean, you go to some parts of American states, how they show it. You see a different representation in, in, in how adverts are done. Mm -hmm. sound of voices and stuff like that but it's still up to I know everyone needs to make money and stuff but it's still up to the actual artist the actor themselves say you know what that doesn't work for my uh credentials that doesn't work for what sits right with me for my standard I don't want to go and play that black character the baby mother the robber the druggie Uh, you know what I mean yeah um but that's why I really respect shows like um Oh, you know, the ones that are kind of artist driven, like Top Boy and Blue Story and all these ones where they're given their perspective rather than what someone who's never really lived in that area thinks it should look like for TV and stuff like yeah. that. So I really appreciate when they give a glimpse of this is how we're, this is how we're living and stuff. So, yeah, it's a hard one. But representation is it's, it's not an easy one when it's linked to your money and you need to go and pay the rent, etc. cetera. Mm. I, understand, I I really do understand what you're saying about the fact that, yes, it's up to the actors to actually stand up and mm-hmm. say, you know what, no. But mm-hmm. at the same time, the flip side of that story is like, yeah, BT doesn't take, take that in credit. You got to mm-hmm. pay your bills. So it's trying to find that balance. Yeah. You know, so mm-hmm. it, I guess, I guess, like you said, it's changing and it takes more and more actors and artists and, and actresses to actually say, no, and with the mm-hmm. change of with the internet and how people can now finance projects, I think yeah. there'll be a, a lot of more change moving forward. Mm-hmm. Definitely, hundred percent agree. Okay, so you know, with the advent of audiobooks, everybody's listened to an audiobook, mm-hmm. and this being all the range, how can people start in that area to become um, voiceovers for audiobooks? Yeah. Um- you can go on, so Audible have the voiceover site called acx.com um, and you can go on there and they'll show, you can go into a category, say for example fiction and the number of words and you can go on there and give a, 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 a sample, a, an audition for a book that you can do. So you can start off in that but I would say just a word of advice from big sister voiceover Leanne is audiobooks to start off with are tough. It's like a marathon because you could be sitting or standing for hours reading it. Um, Yeah, because it takes a long time to read it. Um, And then I would always highly suggest whoever does the reading, the voiceover, do not edit that thing yourself. You will die in editing hours, months, (laughs) etc. So I would always negotiate a deal per word, whatever works for you and the the budget. Um, Just do the recording. Make sure you ship that back out to um, an editor who's going to edit it for you and then get it back to the client or send it back to the client. I personally don't. If I'm going to do an audio book, I prefer to do my own. But if I'm going to do an audio book for someone else, I would just do the voiceover. Editing takes time. It will drain you. But definitely if you want to start up, do something simple. Uh, start an audio book. Start with short ones. Don't do a long epic one. Start with little short ones. Help 
self-help categories, quite short at times, poem books, uh, those can be shorter ones to get into, but don't start off doing editing and that because you think it looks like a bigger deal. It's not. It will take your whole life away from you. <laughs> Nobody is here to have their lives snatched if yeah. they're doing an audio book. Nobody is yeah. here for that. So very early on, I was afraid of speaking in public. And one of my issues was that I hated, I literally hated the sound of my voice. Mm-hmm. Why is it that most people actually hate the sound of their own voice? Yeah, because I was just talking about this today, actually. Now, people hate the sound of their own voice because you hear your voice on the inside Whereas you hear it first on the inside and then you hear it on the outside once it's come out of your mouth. So you hear how it sounds in your head, how it's processing, how it's trying to formulate the words. Mm -hmm. But everybody else will say your voice sounds so nice because they've only heard the, um, the voice after it's come out, gone past your vocal cords and stuff. So you hear your own voice twice at the same time. You hear the inside one and the outside one once you've projected it so people probably cannot like sometimes their own voice because you hear it twice and you may not like the first version which is the inside voice and then as well it can be a lot of psychological stuff like if you've grown up as a child and you're always told to shut up be quiet talk louder Tommy stand up talk louder talk louder Tommy Mm -hmm. you you kind of come with these psychological things like my voice is not loud enough if you go into the bus, no one hears you. When you say, excuse me, that's the bell. A lot of sometimes of your voice can be psychological issues linked to it. Not the actual right. vocal cords or the projection or the ear, nose and throat um, thing as well. Because sometimes if you've got an ear problem, you've got a throat problem, you've got a nose problem, that can kick off your voice as well. So if you've grown up with things like that, that can be added to the I don't like my voice syndrome kind mm-hmm. of thing. Um, but a lot of it is mindset. Honestly, it is. Your voice, anyone's voice can sound great and nice. It just depends on whose ear is listening, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, just like even with music and stuff. I'm not a rock chick, but people's ears appreciate that type of music. It depends on whose ears are listening. Yep. But a lot of saying, like, I don't like the sound of my voice when I was growing up, I believe myself it comes down to mindset and psychological messages that were given to you growing up because you first hear your voice like as a child when you can learn to cry you're like wow what's that oh, that's me I can cry wow <laughs> you know um and that's your first friend your your own voice and stuff apart from your toes when you can put them in your mouth as a baby but <laughs> you know? yeah so it's um it's I think a lot of it voice it's mindset definitely okay. mindset all right so we get past the mindset we have to give a pre- um, presentation we have to speak in public What do most people do wrong when they're doing this, when they're presenting, when they're speaking in public? Um, They talk to the floor and the floor ain't going to give them the job or that new deal. Um, They will often speak too fast. Um, I know that sometimes you've got a time lock, you've got five minutes, ten minutes to give a presentation. Um, Sometimes people will let their nerves overcome them. And there's many techniques you can do, like read a quote before you go in breathe as well breathing is key you need to breathe so you can speak effectively Mm -hmm. and put in pauses into what you're saying which underlines how important what you just said is um and i think as well what people do wrong which i've seen is when they've got like flashcards or notes they've got their laptop they'll stand there and read from it and i'm like listen i haven't come here to watch you read i've come here to listen to you speak which is a whole different skill so um i think as well what would help is people forget that they're talking to humans rather than robots and just see the audience as like they're friends you can talk to them you're great as well and just breathe don't read off your notes um have pauses and prepare if you prepare what you're gonna say or you know your stuff any question you can rock and roll with okay so prepare know your stuff stop talking to the floor and breathe breathe take note folks okay so we're talking about we're still talking on this vein around the presentate um presenting Mm -hmm. um you know public speaking you know generally speaking and actually using your voice impactful in an impactful Mm -hmm. way but have you noticed and i've noticed this too that sometimes you're sat watching someone speak from stage and it feels like they're speaking all of a sudden their voice kind of vanishes yeah. What is going on and what can be done to prevent that? I, I almost call it like a voice fade because you're speaking, you're speaking, and it feels like there's just no voice left. 
Yeah. Um, I think sometimes when that happens, it could be like voice exhaustion. Because if you have to speak for a li- for a living, you need to know when to rest the voice for a living as well. Right. Um, so even like I remember, like I used to think, what's he doing? Like Pavarotti, when he wasn't singing the opera song, he'd have his neck wrapped up in a scarf and would be on silence breaks. So I was like, why is he doing that? That's so extra and deverish. But now I understand <laughs> when, yeah, just like I, I, you really got to protect your voice. It's a tool. Do you like how you look after your arms, your legs, your eyes, etc. It's a tool. So I think voice fades happen when you haven't actually rested the voice, mm-hmm. when you haven't been taking water. Now, water is a natural product, but it's the way you've got to drink it. Like people need to stop drinking cold water, things with ice, because that does not give you a smooth tone sound vocal cords your vocal cords are these two little very thin threads Mm -hmm. and cold water makes them like constrict it makes them really tight and tall you don't want that you Mm -hmm. want to be warm and lubricate that's why i say drink boiling water with a bit of cold water room temperature water Mm -hmm. Um, voice fade happens with a lack of exercise in endurance training uh, incorrect breathing drinking the wrong drinks um also not actually practicing long enough like if you're going to do a marathon you need to start practicing and training to do a marathon mm-hmm. you've got to speak for three hours you've got to practice each day doing talking for more than three hours so you can last that long and stuff um so voice fade can come and also it could be just like uh, you know like a lack of confidence in what they're saying as well because voice fade is is a big one if you have to talk for a living for a long time And don't shout as well. If you need to talk for a living, don't shout. When you shout, you aggravate and can put nodules on the two thin, fine vocal cords. Never shout, never whisper. Always talk at the same tone. That gives you voice fade as well, badly. Okay. So, you you know, I know that you have this presenting course on Udemy where you're Mm -hmm. teaching people how to present their voice and actually give um, perfect presentations and you talk yeah. about creating the perfect alter ego when mm-hmm. speaking in public how does one craft the perfect alter ego yeah like you know you gotta think like who do I want to be when I'm out in this audience of 300 and I've got to give this information about we're going to be moving into this new era, et cetera. And, and that alter ego thing reminds me of like, you know, Beyonce says she becomes Sasha Fierce and she puts mm-hmm. out all these different songs and stuff and you get a different vibe off her. Creating the alter ego is maybe if you're a kind of calm, mild, you know, petite person speaking and you need to be able to speak in front of investment banks, which can often be male dominated, alpha males, lots of testosterone, you got to go in there, give them a talk. You need to create that alter ego of like, I'm hashtag the baddest boss in this place. Everybody listens to me. I am persuasive and I know my stuff. So you've got to kind of get character, even if it's a cartoon character or someone on TV or a movie that you've seen, or I don't know, like Margaret Thatcher, she was a hashtag boss. Some people didn't agree with what she did, but she got the job done, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so thinking of like the qualities of how they talk, how they walk, how they express themselves, you've got to create that in your mind. And when you go on stage, you do the presentation at work, you've got to go to that interview. That's who you become because you kind of kind of act in it, kind of like a Shakespearean Machiavellian play. You just become this Shakespearean actor when you go out there and do your presentation or your interview. Mm hmm. That's that's really I, I like this idea of where you craft your own character. And it's funny that you bring up Margaret Thatcher, because I, I say when I teach is that most people did not know that the voice she uses in public was not her natural voice. She, no, had, to, yeah. she had to she had to adopt and learn that voice. And so that, you know, when she went out in public and said, this lady is not for turning was mm-hmm. something that she had crafted. And which is why when I looked at. Uh, Theresa May I'm like babes you just don't have the chops to be Maggie you you just don't have it you don't have the gravitas that she crafted you know whether you like her loathe her or despised her that's Mm -hmm. not what we're talking about but how she used her voice when she spoke you may not like her but you could not ignore her Mm -hmm. definitely yeah your voice is key for everything it's the convincer Mm -hmm. you may look the part walk the part sound the part smell the part But if your voice is not convincing, because people remember what you say, they will remember it. 
they remember it. And like Margaret Thatcher's key, she put on a different voice. Michael Jackson, he used to put on a fairy voice when he was talking. That's a 50 year old man who had a big bass voice. People can do it, definitely. Did you just say a fairy voice woman? Did yeah, you? Michael Jackson, that was not his normal talking voice. It was not. Find a 50-year-old man who can speak as high as that. No way. Prince, Prince. remember Prince? Spoke very high. But then there are times when Prince will sit and you hear, wait, where did that voice come from? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people who can do it. If you've got an artistic nature, it's just like a character, isn't it, really? And And the character also infuses a voice at the same time. Mm. Mm. Okay, so we've talked about protecting our voices. We've talked about, you know, understanding how to use your, you know, how to use your voice when you speak. But how, Leanne, do you protect your voice when you're working? Uh, when I'm working, I, I, I don't, I try not to have too much conversations throughout the day, particularly if I've got to do a big read or I'm putting a course together or I'm trying to record an audio bit because... Your voice, you can't even, like, say, like, for example, you're going to work for eight hours a day. I wouldn't suggest someone speaks for eight hours straight. To protect my voice while I'm working, um, if anyone sneezes near me, I'm running, first of all. I can't pick up any germs. Um, I've always got antibacterial wipes, um, gel. Um, I drink ginger, cinnamon, turmeric, cumin, and lemon in hot water each day. Wow, that's a combo. Just, yeah, it do not taste the greatest, but it does the job. So I um, use that to protect my voice. Um, I'll drink warm water mixed with um, boiling water with lime in it and cucumbers in it throughout the day. I wrap my neck. I'll always have a scarf on. Um, and I don't shout. Well, I try not to shout um, unless it's work-related because that aggravates your voice. Um I would also say as well, don't shout, don't whisper and stuff. Um, and I'm careful what food I eat as well, because food can change the sound of your voice. Because mm-hmm. okay. it's connected to your tummy. Uh, sometimes, I don't know, some food doesn't work for all people, myself included. Uh, some food can give you gases and make your tummy grumble. And you're trying to record and your tummy's grumbling. It's not going to work. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. That combination drink, you need to share that, but it sounds lethal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we talk about their different voices. There's the deep baritone voice, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the likes of Denzel Washington and what we call yeah. the voice of God with Morgan Freeman. And then you mm-hmm. have those breathy voices. You know, those ones that I think the most famous one would be Marilyn Monroe when she's, mm. you know, doing that. Um, Happy birthday, Mr. President. Yeah. Do we consider those breathy voices, are those nice voices to hear, in your opinion? Yeah, I mean, like, traditionally, yes, those breathy kind of feminine floaty voices were those that were easier on the air, definitely, Um, because they were seen as very uber feminine. It was linked to prettiness. Prettiness is linked to attractiveness. Attractiveness means that she can produce all of these different kind of things. These like kind of old school mm-hmm. mentality things. So they're easier on the ear. I mean, it's definitely easier to hear a female voice that is soft and floaty. And then compared to as well, I like to hear a male voice, which is deep, commanding, strong, like Morgan Freeman and those type of voices and stuff. Um, but I think the, the, the acceptable ear or I call it ear candy voices is definitely changing because more people are having a voice because of Instagram, the internet, YouTube channels and stuff like that. So the acceptable feminine voices are definitely changing. Acceptable male voices are definitely changing. Mm. Okay. All right. So there is a change to it. And yes, okay, I can see where that is. And there are some voices out there that you listen to, you're like, yeah, I could listen to this all day. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what techniques are there for us to warm up our voices to obtain the best from them? I think, obviously, taking my special formula drink, I think, (laughs) do that first. Um, But other techniques that you can use, it could be just, like, singers can relate to this because it's techniques that singers singers will use, like doing the scales. Like, first of all, hum. Don't laugh first because if you've woken up first thing in the morning, your voice is not there yet. So just kind of... Gently hum that, 
and hold the hums and then go to la 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 uh, and then as well, I think as well, there's so many different techniques and things like you can start off warming up with doing tongue twisters like red lorry, yellow lorry, red lorry, yellow lorry. And then you just quicken the pace. So that helps you to warm up as well. Mm-hmm. So you're um, doing things like that and humming along to like an instrumental song like on Spotify playlist. Mm-hmm. That helps you to move your voice to different heights. That's what I'll use as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then start reading, read a blog, read a WhatsApp, read a Psalm, start reading out loud at a low level, read it again, go to your mid range and then read it again, go to your highest level that you can go in your voice. Cause one voice has about three or four ranges. So you can do very deep in your voice. Then you do your middle comfortable talking one. Then you go very, very high. You know, this is how I normally talk. Imitate the accent, you know, so you can move your voice throughout the range like singers, like you hear Mariah Carey, she sings at a certain rate and then she can go way up the scale. Your yes. speaking voice does that same thing. It's the same tool. She just needs a little bit of training on how to move it. But um, yeah, those are the main things that I do. I read something out loud. Always, always read out loud when you're doing warm up and start gently. Okay. So, uh, folks, let me uh, practice my uh, deep, deep voice here. <laughs> and so. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. So without being married to them, who Mm. else's voice can you listen to for the rest of your life? Um, mm, There's so many. Okay, like, can I just pick like, okay, right, I'll just pick like three and be humble. All right, then. So if it's a lady, I love to listen to Joanna Lumley's voice. It's so smooth and floaty and feminine and pretty and it's just so like whatever she says you'll be like yeah yeah I agree yeah I agree yeah that's fine you can do that that's fine she's got one of those voices that's just so uber feminine and soft and comforting calming everybody wants a bit calm and peace in their life you know all right I I love hers as a female one um Another male voice that I love. There's so many that I like. Another lady that I love, she's called Leanne Kernan. Um, her voice is very, she's Canadian. So I kind of like a Canadian accent because it's a little softer tilt than the American. Some certain states, a little softer tilt to listen to on the ear. And okay. she's very jolly and happy and youthful. And she has videos out each week and stuff like that. She talks about great topics about God and stuff. So I really love her voice because she's so passionate and youthful at the same time. So that's two women, okay. two men, one of them that I love. He's, he's the typical uh, voiceover one. He's um, on Instagram. He's called Red Pepper. He's the typical deep voice that you know and you hear on the cinema adverts and stuff. It's one that you can always relate to. Like when a new advert's coming out, it's his voice that does it and stuff. So you know what it is that you're getting, you know. Okay. So um, he's a voiceover called Red Pepper. Um, and then another one that I love, this guy, I've only heard him this year, um, Marvin Abbey. He's on this podcast called Free Shots of Tequila. And I only stumbled on it because I was like, why are they calling Alcoholics Anonymous after alcohol? I didn't have a clue. And then um, obviously it's not about Alcoholics Anonymous. It's about these two guys' lives and their antics that they get up to. It's, it's funny. But it's, it is, an, I'd say it's a triple X rated one. Some of the topics they do talk about, you have to just turn it off. Okay, thank you very much. But his voice, woo! Yeah, Ladies, I've, I've you... listened to his voice. It's very, I think the only word we can use is it's a side of delicious. Very much so. Mm. And I've never used that adjective on him. I will definitely <laughs> use that. It's like, it's so, I feel like I did a video about male voices I like and obviously I had to feature him. And it's very, it's a side of delicious. It's, it's, it's got a husk. It's got a London to it. It has little Afro words in it. It's it's very very it's it's indescribable. It's one that you just have to listen to, but very much so a delicious ear candy. I'll call it mm. hashtag ear candy. That's yes. what I call Marvin Abbey's voice, definitely. Okay. All right, so Marvin Abbey, you have the ear candy voice. So, <laughs> ladies, go listen to him and tell us what you think. Yeah. Okay, looking at everything you've gone and everything you've done in your career, mm-hmm. what will be your your advice for your eighteen year old self? Oh, 18 year old self, just do it. Never be fearful of anything. Do everything. Even if you're not too sure where it's going to end up, do it anyway. It'll get you there. 
all roads lead to the same destination. Okay, just do it. I like mm -hmm. this. And, you know, um, Nike, I have paid you so you can actually use that word now. So you're getting paid <laughs> for it, so it's fine. <laughs> Um, so we've come to that point in the show when we do our so loud moment of the week where we get to celebrate, you get to celebrate a person, a thing, even yourself. What is Leanne? What is your so loud moment of the week? Uh, sold out moment of the week. I must just say I celebrated on November my 40th birthday. I'm like, oh my goodness me. For me, like to say like I have got to 40 years old, it's only by God and that I'm doing my own thing, running my own business, using one of the skills that God has given me. It's just incredible. So this particular week, it was a time of like reflection, Thanksgiving, like, wow, God, you can sit as a little girl and dream and then let your dreams become a reality. There's nothing nothing bigger nothing better than that to see like what you planned out what you dreamed about what you prayed about slowly but surely having loads of patience like job um to see it come into reality it's 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 something else i just say just hashtag keep hustling everybody whatever it is you're gonna do just 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 do it all right leanne that is an incredible so loud moment of the week and just to celebrate you turning and crossing over into 40. Let's give you Yay. a huge round of applause here. Yay! Yay! All right. So we're, we're talking about what you do and being that you're also a coach, mm -hmm. people's voices. What is the one thing that you want when people come to you to walk away with? I want them to leave with their confidence in their voice back because sadly when you get older you can lose confidence in even the smallest thing like your voice but when you're a kid you have this freedom and liberty that you can shout sing and dance anywhere you don't care what your voice sounds like so I want them to get back that inner child voice that says you can do it this is you we can you know I want them to get that back and that just comes back with a lot of training, a lot of reassurance and practice and hearing your voice out loud and being comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's really, 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 really powerful because, yeah, it, it's it's tough out there. And sometimes we get knocks mm -hmm. and all sorts. And I think having someone to remind you that, you know what? inside of you there's that same five-year-old that that same 10-year-old there's that person mm -hmm. that dreamed of climbing mountains still alive and you just need yeah. to chip away at the gunk to find that person within them mm -hmm. i think that's actually really powerful to remind people of your own personal power mm -hmm. for sure definitely and everyone has it in them you just need to dig deep and find it because sometimes it can be not loss, but it can be like buried out amongst another lot of different stresses in life. Exactly. So what are you currently reading or what was the last book you read? Oh, okay. So this year I like promised myself that I'm going to read books from forward to back. Do you know what I mean? Because one year, last year, I'd jump. Anyone suggested a book, I'd just jump, 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 jump. So what I do is I read three different books across the month. So it okay. could be 15 minutes on each book. And then I'll read one to help my business. So something about, could be, uh, I, I didn't read it. I did the audio book of Gary Vaynerchuk's um, Crushing It book. So okay. that's to obviously help my business. Then I would read a book to help my faith life. So I would read, um, it could be anything. It could be, uh, I don't know, a book by Raul Marino, The Battle That Even Kings Lost. So a faith-related book, something that keeps my mindset right mm -hmm. where I need it to be. And then I'll read a book to help my lifestyle. So it could be something like, I want to get rid of all the clutter out of my house, like Mary Kondo. Or I could read something to help me in regards to helping care for my mum who's got dementia. So something about, no, today is not Tuesday, mum, a book like that. So I read in three different niches. Mm -hmm. for business, for my faith, and for my lifestyle. So I try and make sure I cover all of it. And if I don't actually get to read it, I'll do the audio book, which helps, which is win-win for me, definitely. Exactly. Audio books are so easy. Um, I'm, I'm one of those people, I love my books, as in physically love books. Yeah. I love to crack 
you know, there's something about getting a brand new book and then you open it and there's that brand new fresh book smell. Yeah. Love that smell. Yeah. So, you know, London is crowded. The tube is crowded. Commuting mm -hmm. is painful. So I just put in my, my headphones and listen to my books now. It's like, it's fine. It's okay. I can cope. Yeah, it's true. It's 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 because I love that passion as well. Because growing up, audio books were like a rarity. Going to the library and getting that, you know, I love that book taste, that smell. Because mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, you can like smell new books. They actually smell. Oh, yeah. They have a certain yeah. smell, definitely. Yep. <laughs> and I love, you know, you get a new book right, and the spine ain't broken. You just open yep. it wide. It's like, and then oh, you hear crack, 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 crack. Woo! <laughs> I know it. I know it. I know it. Definitely. Because like, I loved books growing up as a kid, then going uni and the books I had to read were more um, academic based. So that kind of love passion wasn't really there at that time. It was like a, a mandatory read. But I do love the physical touch books. But lifestyle changer, like you're saying, if you're riding on the train, you got to have one hand holding. And can you really turn the page of that book? You're better off just getting an audio book in your ears and just letting it whiz through while you're commuting and stuff. Definitely. Exactly. So, Liam, what's next for you? Oh, well, I've got some plans in place for the end of 2019 so I can really hit 2020, the year of vision, hard. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So next coming, of course, I'm going to still keep putting out my courses, my ebooks, my audio books. That's my bread and butter. But I think 2020, I need to really be, um, everybody please pray for me. I want to be really stepping up my game. I want to really be getting my voice out there and a couple of more of the um, uh, wider audience adverts or films and stuff. So I want my voice for you to be like, ah, oh, I know that girl. I heard her on, you know, the podcast. But then I also heard her on this advert or she's on um, this show or mm -hmm. she's doing that or talking on different shows or other people's podcasts as well and stuff like that. So right. getting my voice out there in a wider audience, because in the speaking industry, voiceover, yeah, it's known, but there's always room for improvement. So I want to step up my game 2020. I want to get to a wider audience. So I'm not necessarily when I'm doing the voice for an advert. I may be going to speak about a certain issue on a right. show, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. Sounds powerful. So how can people connect with you now? You know, your social media, your website, how can, how can they find you? Yeah, I mean, I love hearing from everybody. And I think one of the best ways, definitely get me on, you can email me, leanne at leannesvoice.com. You can get me on Instagram, it's Leanne's Voice. Twitter, Lee the Voice. And um, my website is leannesvoice.com. Um, I'm on uh, TikTok just recently as well, trying to put a couple of stuff out on there. But definitely for sure, get me on any one of those platforms. I'm on Facebook as well. Leanne's Voice is the group. I go live in there as well. I go live once a week and share tips. And feel free, you can ask me questions and then I'll answer them as soon as uh, I'll try as soon as I can get a package together and put a video together on the live feed on Instagram or um, Facebook, whichever works best. But definitely, definitely stay in touch. I learn from you as much as you can learn from me at the same time, you know? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Guys, you've heard it. Find her on social media, connect with her, reach out to her, tell her you listen to the show, tell her what you want to hear mm -hmm. from her. And also go on to her YouTube channel, subscribe to that as well, and connect to, with her yeah. that way as well. So Leanne, last question, last question. Mm -hmm. Based on our interview tonight, how would you describe my voice? I would describe it as definitely podcast ready. So it's definitely one to listen to. <laughs> Carmen uh knowledgeable engaging and um i would say directive without being school momish if that makes sense yeah that's that's good we don't want to be yeah. school momish <laughs> no definitely not definitely not definitely not definitely not awesome leanne it's been such a pleasure to have you on the show thank you it's been you great want you're welcome. You're welcome. And I'm looking forward to actually discovering more about the work that you're doing and actually looking for your eBooks. And you do have a book on Amazon, if I'm not mistaken as well. Yeah, I've got a book on Amazon about, um, I want to be a voiceover, but I just don't know where to start. I've got that one out. Um, and I have another new book that I've re released in the last few weeks, um, how to speak effectively in interviews. So mm -hmm. 2020, you're going to see a lot more ebooks audiobooks and courses coming out on how to speak effectively in different areas of your life so 
whichever area I can help you in, please feel free to go on and have a look and see what I'm talking about. Give me feedback about like what do you think and stuff. I love hearing what people think. Awesome. So guys, you've heard it from her and you know what to do. So reach out to Leanne, go onto mm-hmm. her social media, connect with her and find out more. So Leanne, once again, thank you for being on the show. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. I'm so glad I got to stay tonight and talk to you for this great time. Thank you everyone for listening. I hope you understood everything I was saying. I know sometimes I can talk really, really fast, but <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed it as well. And you've understood everything. Definitely. Um, it's been a pleasure. I'm sure it was fine. I, you know, your voice is one that I could listen to actually perfectly all day. So yes, your voice is really delicious to listen to. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so guys, you know what to do. It's a wrap. We've come to the end of the show and you know how to reach us on social media. We're on Instagram, we're in Facebook, Twitter, and on our website, drop me a message, drop me a DM and Instagram. Tell me if you want to be on the show, tell me what you love. And if you know someone who is great for the show, you know how to reach us. So guys, it's a wrap and we'll see you same time, same place. You've been listening to The Shine Out Loud Show. If you want to connect with us or let us know what you thought of today's show, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Shine Out Show. 